It's a new season of the Supreme Court, TV's most dramatic new series. I'm Jay Lippman and this is The Day Before Tomorrow. And today, the Clean Water Act. We'll be covering what the act is, the history behind it, and a current Supreme Court case that could dramatically limit the EPA's power to enforce it. Before we get to the case, let's look at the Clean Water Act. What is it? Well, it is a piece of landmark legislation passed in October 1972. To set the scene, prior to the Clean Water Act, the rivers of the United States were so polluted that they caught on fire pretty regularly. Mum, mum, river's on fire again. While the act is 50 years old, efforts to regulate water pollution go back centuries. Right? Even Benjamin Franklin petitioned to clean up the Delaware River in the early 1700s. But even with the old Benny Franks boost, the first federal legislation addressing water pollution didn't come until 1948, when the Federal Water Pollution Control Act was passed. But the problem with that bill is that it only gave the federal government limited power and funding to regulate discharges from plants and factories. Zooming forward, in the 1960s and 70s, members of the environmental movement took a look around America's waterways and had a realization. Those waterways were revolting and kind of on fire. As a result of those activists' hard work, in 1972, Congress passed the Clean Water Act. President Nixon, of course, attempted to veto, calling it extreme and needless overspending, but Congress overrode the veto by an overwhelming bipartisan majority. The Clean Water Act was that popular. It gave the EPA authority to enforce those regulations, funded the construction of sewage treatment plants, and made it illegal to pollute navigable waters without a permit, among other things. Now, this Supreme Court case deals with that navigable waters language. In one of the first cases before the court this session, Sackett versus EPA, right, involves the Clean Water Act, and here are the basics. 15 years ago, a couple purchased 0.63 acres of land 300 feet from Priest Lake, Idaho. On that land, they planned to build a home. Now, the couple was ordered by the EPA to cease building because the agency says there are wetlands on that lot that fall under the protection of the Clean Water Act. Now, the couple is asking the justices to narrow the definition of waters of the United States so that their land is no longer going to be covered by the Clean Water Act. That case is currently being decided and could have huge implications. The court will define how far from the edge of federal waters, in this case, Priest Lake, the Clean Water Act actually applies. As I've said, this case could redefine what waters of the United States means, or as the same cool kids call it, WOTUS. There are all sorts of ways that neighboring wetlands can contaminate navigable waterways. And if we scale down the definition of what is a waterway to only include literal water, all of the avenues of contamination are no longer protected. Water, water, wa wa water, water, wa water, 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 Worcester, Worcester mass. And the court could do just that, with potential rulings ranging from excluding 51% of the nation's wetlands from EPA authority to limiting the Clean Water Act to exclusively apply to bodies of water large enough to be navigated by ships. The Clean Water Act has served as an immensely valuable resource in protecting our nation's waterways in the last 50 years. We'll be keeping an eye on the case as it's been deliberated, and we hope that you will as well, because this ruling will follow last session's dramatic curtailing of the EPA's ability to enforce the Clean Air Act. If we keep having these landmark precedent setting pieces of environmental legislation slowly chipped away by this court or any other, where are we going to find ourselves in five years, 10 years, or 20 years as it relates to the air that we breathe, the water that we drink and that we swim in, and the world that we need around us to keep us healthy and safe? This season on the Supreme Court, does precedent matter? We may just find out that the answer is, go jump in the lake, which may be on fire.